I've had several people at work ask me these three specific questions, so I thought that um, we would discuss them in this video. The first question that it, um, comes up is, if you've had COVID already, do you need to get the vaccine? Uh, and then next question is, if you get the vaccine, can you still transmit COVID? And the last question I've been asked is, um, does the vaccine protect you against this new UK variant that's talked about? Let's deal with the first one. If you've had COVID, do you need to get the vaccine? And that's a very interesting question because basically that is a question of um, what is better, natural immunity or vaccine immunity? And for most diseases, natural immunity is stronger and longer lasting than um, vaccine immunity. And there's a couple of diseases where the opposite is true where vaccine immunity is greater than um, natural immunity. Now, usually natural immunity is better because when you actually get the disease, you have billions of viral particles inside your body. Your body's exposed to the um, pathogen for a long period of time while you're fighting off the disease. So your immune system gets a long, hard look at a lot of um, particles and can generate a pretty robust immune response to it. So in most cases, things like measles and stuff, if you get it, you're going to have a longer lasting immunity than getting the vaccine. Um, but there are a couple of um, diseases for which the opposite is true. And that's because vac viruses also want to evade your immune system. So viruses have a way of evading your immune system. And vaccines have sometimes have adjuvants that increase um, the immunogenicity of the vaccine. And also you can isolate the parts that you body, you, you want to mount the immune response against and get rid of the parts that um, decrease the immune response. So things like uh, Haemophilus influenza B, the pneumococcal vaccine, um, HPV vaccine, those, all, those vaccines give you better immunity with the vaccine than with uh, the actual disease. Now, COVID is interesting because we actually don't know how long the immunity lasts for the natural infection, so natural immunity, and we don't know how long it lasts with the vaccine either. Um, we know that the vaccine is protective at least for three to four months because the phase three trials have gone on for that long and we have very good data to show that you have very good protection for three to four months. And then in, but we don't know how much longer that lasts. You know, maybe it only lasts three or four months. Maybe it drops off in the fifth month. Maybe it lasts a whole year. Maybe it lasts two years. Maybe it lasts three years. Who we don't we just don't know. We don't have um, the information. The trials have not been going on long enough for us to say whether it's been um, whether how long it's going to last. And then also, COVID only started about a year ago. So the first naturally infected person was about a year ago. So the longest we would know if someone is immune to it is about a year. And so there's a couple of uh, ways of looking at this in terms of how long does natural immunity last? Because that's actually the question that we want to know. Like, if natural immunity lasts like five years, why would you even bother getting the vaccine? It makes no sense. Um, so this is a great paper out of The Lancet um, called SARS-CoV-2 Immunity Review and Applications to Phase 3 Vaccine Candidates. Uh, the interesting part is in this introduction. So it says, in the past 18 years, three novel coronavirus have crossed the species barrier to infect humans and cause human-to-human -human transmission. So those three are SARS, you know, the first SARS, a MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, and then SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. And then in addition, there are four seasonal human coronavirus. Uh, they have these names, 229E, NL63, and so on. These cause the common cold. and so. Um, they, uh, these are very common and we've, we've all probably been exposed to one or more of these things more than likely. Um, and so if we knew the immunogenicity of these viruses, we can kind of have an idea of how immunogenic SARS-CoV-2 would be. So what we do know is that immunity to seasonal coronaviruses, the ones that cause the cold, tend to be short. Some, you know, sometimes immunity only lasts for 80 days, sometimes a few years. They've done actually studies where they purposely infected people with um, these, the, the ones that cause the common cold because those aren't very dangerous viruses. So people signed up for those studies. And um, you could reinfect people within about a year or two. So 
um, for those viruses, it seems like they don't last that long. And then reinfection has been documented in SARS-CoV-2. So that's also true. And um, in patients infected with SARS-1 or MERS, um, you can see measurable, uh, detect measurable antibody levels for two to three years, but they were gone five to six years later. So we know that for SARS-1 and MERS, uh, there's detectable um, immunity in two to three years, and the antibody levels fall off pretty rapidly after six months. So if you were to guess how long natural immunity for um, SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 is, uh, a reasonable guess would be at least six months, possibly up to two to three years. Um, and so, you know, there's some studies where they looked at antibody levels. This is one out of, I think, Portugal. And what they did in this study is they looked at over uh, 2,000 um, patients and they measured levels of uh, antibody. And here's, here's the uh, bottom line right here. So although titers reduce after infection, the ability to detect anti-SARS-CoV-2 IgG antibodies remained robust with confirmed neutralization activity for up to six months. So you can say pretty reasonably that it gives you, that natural infection will probably give you at least six months of protection. Uh, the other way you can kind of figure this out is um, how many people are getting reinfected? So, you know, millions of people have been infected um, in the world with uh, SARS-CoV-2. And um, at some point, it's been here long enough that you would start, you would expect to see reinfection. Now, a lot of reinfections, they don't know, is the reinfection just getting the PCR results where you see dead virus that's still lingering in the patient and you're just amplifying that up, giving you a, pro a positive. And a lot of the early, quote, reinfections were just dead virus that the PCR was just picking up again. But there have been documented cases of reinfection. And the way they know that, that for sure it's reinfection is they sequence the first virus and they sequence the second virus and they are different. So um, since then, there have been at least 24 reinfections that have been officially confirmed. So we know for sure at least 24 people have definitely gotten infected twice with uh, COVID-19. And then if you look at unconfirmed, so people that are, have been tested twice to have it by PCR, but they have not been sequenced, so you don't know that it's two separate viruses, um, there's at least a thousand of those. That seems like a lot of reinfections, but when you think that there have been millions of people that have been infected, a thousand isn't a lot, even if all these thousand turn out to be confirmed, which uh, is uh, probably unlikely. But that's like way less than 1% reinfection rate. So it means that probably most of the people that have been infected are still immune. So basically the question of should you get immunized again? And this is the CDC official FAQ on it. If you've had COVID and recovered, should you get vaccinated? And they're basically saying that you shouldn't not get vaccinated. So not, they're not recommending that you do get vaccinated, but they're saying that you shouldn't um, you should, it shouldn't be withheld from you. So they're saying it should be offered to you. So they're not pushing one way or the other. But basically the, inter the question is, is how long does natural immunity last and how long does um, vaccine immunity last? And at this point, you, we're dealing with two kind of unknowns. We don't know how long vaccine immunity lasts and we don't know how long natural immunity lasts. I think a reasonable estimate based on what we know about other coronaviruses and current data on COVID-19 is it lasts at least six months, possibly up to two to three years, uh, which is pretty good. And so uh, I, don't, I don't think that the vaccine would be much better than that, but it might be. It might, it might last you a lifetime. Who knows? We just don't have the information for that. Um, at this point, I, I personally would say that there isn't a strong argument to be made that you should be vaccinated if you've had COVID-19. But, you know, that's probably a fairly controversial um, opinion. And um, some people will say, oh, you should definitely get the vaccine because that's kind of a known quantity. Um, but I, I would argue it's not really a known quantity. We don't know how long it lasts. We know it works great for uh, 
three to four months and it may last longer. But anyway, that's my take on that question. The next question is, um, can you transmit the virus after you've been vaccinated? So if you've been vaccinated, does it mean that you can't bring it home to your family if you're a healthcare worker? And that's what most people are worried about. Like, you, I, you know, I'll get COVID from work. I've been vaccinated, um, but can I still bring it home to my family? And a lot of articles in the popular press will say, you know, you can transmit the virus um, after uh, you've been vaccinated. That's not true. That's not necessarily true. The, the, the answer is we don't know. And the reason we don't know is that the studies were not designed to, to check for that. And so the, here is the New England Journal of Medicine just published yesterday, um, uh, December 30th on the phase three trial of the Moderna vaccine. So I'm just gonna go over the Moderna vaccine, but the Pfizer vaccine trial was essentially identical and the way they ran it was pretty much the same. And so we can scroll through here and basically you wanna know their protocol and what they were looking for. And because that's what tells you if they weren't looking for it, then they can't give you an answer on it. So if you look at this, um, you have to look at the, it's basically, here's the methods. They go through the methods and see, they, they said, if you want to know everything, there's this protocol. So you click this link and you get to this. This is their protocol. It's 307 pages, um, but I've kind of scrolled through it for you for this um, endpoint. And what you want to look for is this primary uh, efficacy endpoint. This is what they were looking for. This is the main thing they were looking for, primary efficacy endpoint. So what they want to do is the primary efficacy endpoint will be evaluated um, by VE of mRNA-1273, this is the name, their name for their vaccine, to prevent the first occurrence of COVID-19 starting 14 days after the second injection, where COVID-19, so this is the important thing, what are they defining COVID-19 as? They're defining it as symptomatic disease based on the following criteria. So they're not, they're not looking for asymptomatic COVID-19. So if you had asymptomatic COVID-19, it would never be picked up in the study because the way they do it is they got, you know, 30,000 people, half of them got the vaccine, half of them got um, a placebo, which was just saline. And then they had them have this little app or an electronic diary at home. And every day they would check their temperature. They would have the, um, the study participants um, take their temperature and then um, Asked them if they had any of these symptoms, chills, myalgia, headache, sore throat, new olfactory or taste disorder, like they lost their sense of smell or taste. So if you had any two of these and one of these, which was cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, or clinical and radiographic evidence of pneumonia, and you were positive for uh, COVID-19 by PCR swab. So if you had, you have to have two of these, one of these, and be positive then you had COVID-19, according to their uh, trial. Um, so, we, so they can say with confidence that their vaccine prevented you from having two of these, at least two of these, at least one of these, and this. That didn't happen as much as in the placebo. It was 95% effective at stopping symptomatic COVID. However, if you had asymptomatic COVID, which you had none of these symptoms, but you still had virus, in you, which is possible, uh, then you would never have been picked up in this phase three trial. And so it's possible that you would have asymptomatic disease and be spreading the virus after you had this vaccine because they did not look for that. Now, does it mean that that actually happens? No, because just because they didn't look for it doesn't mean that it happened. And the way that vaccines work is they create a antibody reaction that neutralizes the virus and, and um, vaccines work to prevent you from getting the disease asymptomatic or otherwise. So probably, you probably won't get asymptomatic disease and you probably can't transmit it, but they can't say that for sure because they didn't test it. Um, so that's, so can you transmit the disease? If based on how we understand how vaccines work, probably not, but maybe. 
and they didn't specifically test for it, so they can't say for sure. And then the last is, does the vaccine protect against this new UK variant? The new UK variant hit California and Colorado, like I think yesterday. Um, so it now it's it's definitely in the United States at this point, and probably and since um, it is more transmissible than the wild type, or it seems to be, um, it will probably become more widespread in America too. So it's kind of an important question. And so you know this is where we're at now. Um, in, you know first there was um, preprint articles that haven't undergone review, and now uh, the science is uh, we're so um, this thing's so fast moving that we have to go to Twitter to get information about this stuff. So this is a Twitter account of um, a virologist. And um, this is basically the mutations that are in this new UK variant. And the thing we need to look for carefully is these, the ones in the spike protein, because the spike protein is what's used in the vaccines. They, they target the spike protein. So mutations in the spike protein could theoretically make the vaccines ineffective. So these are the, um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mutations in the spike protein. And so there is this company that does um, work on looking at what the dominant epitopes. And so if you go look, look at my other video about the UK variant, uh, we mentioned that there's multiple epitopes on a protein, so multiple little spots that the antibody can attach to. And their technology looks at what the dominant epitopes are in the spike protein. And so here's a graph that they put out. And so these little red, so here's the entire length of the spike protein. It's about 1200, 1273 amino acids. Um, and so these red dots are where the dominant epitopes are. So these are the most likely places for the antibodies to attach to. And these yellow areas are the areas that were mutated in the UK variant. And as you can see, the yellow areas do not overlap with the red areas. So the dominant epitopes do not correspond to the areas of mutation. So this, this would indicate that the mutation does not affect the immunogenicity and, and the antibody targets of the vaccine. Um, now, another way you can think about it is, is that it's possible that mutations in these areas change the conformation or the shape of the protein and could still affect the adjacent epitopes, but it's unlikely. And that, so the short answer is we don't know. The, lo the longer answer is it probably still works. The vaccine probably still works on this variant. And um, Moderna and Pfizer are looking into it. And probably what Moderna and Pfizer are going to do is they're going to grow the new variant. And then they have... Um, serum from their study participants with the neutralizing antibodies. They will test their neutralizing antibodies against the new variant and will confirm whether or not the neutralizing antibodies work against the new variant. And that will probably come out in a week or two. That information will come out fairly soon. But this is a very interesting um, way of kind of sort of answering the question is by looking at the dominant epitopes and seeing if the mutations correspond the dominant epitopes, and they do not. So it seems like the vaccines probably will work. So um, those were some of the common questions. And I, I, if, if that happened to be something that you were thinking about, hopefully this video was helpful in answering those questions. And thanks for watching.